please give it up for the wonderful Ron Hart. Um, hello. Um, okay, so my nieces were coming to visit. They were going to fly from New Jersey to California by themselves for the first time. We were so excited um, because my daughters, Anina and Lula, adore their cousins, Leah and Eva. Yes, I just threw four names at you that end with A. Don't worry about telling them apart. I was a dad and I couldn't tell them apart. They were like eight to 10 at this, so when they would get together, it was just like this like, vortex tornado of like little girl energy and could never see what was going on. But we were super excited, it was gonna be a lot of fun. Now, my nieces also have an aunt and uncle up in the Bay Area. My wife tells me the plan is they're gonna spend a week up there with them and then come down and see us for a week. I say, oh, it's a coolest uncle contest. Yeah. My wife's like, I didn't say that. And I said, well, I did. Because <laughs> the truth is like, we don't see them that often and I, I, I wanted to connect with them. Specifically, I wanted them to like me. More specifically, I wanted them to like me more than the other uncle. <laughs> and I don't know this guy, like barely know him. He's my wife's brother's wife's brother, okay? So distant relation. The one thing I know about him is he has the audacity to call himself Funkle. <laughs> I was worried that was gonna be too subtle, no, no. As in fun uncle, which is A, terrible, and B, inaccurate, because clearly, if anyone is the fun uncle, it's me, right? <laughs> and I was hell-bent to make sure my nieces knew that, because family's important to me. <laughs> okay, so we met up in, in Santa Cruz to, to make the, the drop, and uh, my daughters are thrilled to see, see their, uh, their cousins. Right away, Lee and Eva are going on and on about the amazing week they just had with their funkle, right? This dude took them to Yosemite. So yeah, it is a competition, and he is cheating. Like, how is Los Angeles gonna keep up with Yosemite, right? Like, oh, here's the Grove. Like, no, no. Like, am I just supposed to like conjure a celebrity sighting? Like, it which wasn't fair. So I'm like, okay, now we're behind. We gotta catch up. So. Santa Cruz has this amazing boardwalk on the ocean. It's a lot of fun. We were gonna go there the next day and I'm like, no, we are going tonight. I'm not putting these girls to bed until I have dazzled them. <laughs> so we go to the boardwalk, we're riding the rides, we're, you know, we're playing the games, everybody's having a great time, hashtag better than Yosemite. <laughs> and at a certain point, like uh, Eva spots a haunted house. It's like, oh, I wanna go in there. And Lee and Lula are like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Now, Anina is my oldest. She goes into mom mode. She's like, that looks too scary. <laughs> and I'm like, that sounds like fun kill and I'm fun call. Let's go to the haunted house. Now, the second we get in there, it's too dark. The music is too creepy. It is obvious instantly they are way too young to be in here. Sure enough, a giant spider pops in our face. <laughs> Eva screams and leaps into my wife's arm. We are 10 feet into this thing and she is done. But there's people behind us, so we gotta keep moving forward, right? Now the next room is this like hall of mirrors where they're playing like a, like a chainsaw murder soundtrack. I don't know, but Eva is adding to this with all of her screams. Now the other girls aren't scared by this haunted house, but the mirrors, are reflecting Eva's abject terror like 8,000 times, and that scares them. So now Leah just barnacles onto my wife's hip, Lula starts screaming and leaps into my arms, and we start like dragging them into the next room, which is this like labyrinth dungeon. The whole time, Anina is saying, I told you this was too scary. <laughs> So now like, it's like, how are we, we're just dragging them along, trying to get through, there's nowhere we're gonna make it. We spot a security camera, and we don't know if they can hear us, but we just start screaming at it, help, help! And then, luckily, there's an intercom, and we just hear, uh, Donnie, let them out. <laughs> and then, teenage employee Donnie arrives. And he, he pulls back this curtain, which reveals like, a, like an exit. Now that would have been super helpful, except 
Donny arrived by popping out of a crypt dressed like a bloody zombie. He's got like a eyeball hanging off his cheek. Now everyone's screaming, including me, but we just kind of funnel through this like exit door, which is clearly like the exit for terrified children. So now we're in this like well-lit stairwell, we're out of the ride, but Lula is screaming, Eva is sobbing, Leah is wailing, and Anina is shouting over everybody, guys, guys, this part isn't haunted. All of this is like just ping-ponging off this like cinder block echo chamber wind. We're just freaking them out even more. So we have to like drag them up the stairs and like basically throw them out onto the boardwalk. My wife falls to the ground and the girls just pile on her in this cheery, <laughs> snotty, sweaty ball of humanity. I'm catching my breath and Lula, Anina looks up at me and says, I wasn't scared. <laughs> I catch my wife's eyes and she says, ice cream now. <laughs> and I race off and I spend all of my money on frozen sugar, whatever I can find. And I bring it back and we get these girls at, these, at this table and they're having their snack and it is like eerie quiet. It's 4,000 yard stairs. It was like, like grade school had gone to Nam and come back, right? <laughs> and I can just picture them as like old women getting together and being like, do you guys remember that day in Santa Cruz when our childhood ended? Oh yeah! <laughs> And I'm marveling, like a couple hours ago, I was hoping my nieces would think I was fun, and now I'm wondering if their father is gonna press charges for child endangerment. And then Lula turns to her cousin Eva and says, you were so scared. And Eva laughs. And then Anina's like, did you guys see that guy's eyeball? And now everybody's laughing. And pretty soon it turns into this like group therapy session where they're like working through their trauma. <laughs> they're like laughing and giggling and slurping their popsicles and they realize they've actually had an amazing night. And that's when I realized I had been so focused on the fun part of Funkle, I had completely forgotten about the uncle bit. I mean, my nieces, they had taken this trip to see family and now here they were they were bonding with their cousins over a near-death experience. <laughs> you know, they had, they had discovered that their, their aunt was someone they would cling to when they have abject terror. Um, they had found out their uncle is good for free ice cream, you know? <laughs> they hadn't come out to California to see Yosemite or the boardwalk. They were there for us. And once I had that realization, I was able to like relax. I stopped trying to dazzle them and I just tried to connect with them. We brought them back to LA and we had fun. We, we didn't shovel fun in their face, we just hung out. We got to bond together as a family and everybody had a great time. And the universe rewarded me because the last night they were here, we went to a restaurant and in walks Lady Gaga. <laughs> Suck it Yosemite. Now, I know there wasn't really a coolest uncle competition. I understand that. Um, but there was a reward. I won the prize of bonding with my nieces. And I know that happened because we visited them for Hanukkah. And those little girls gave me a present. It was a t-shirt that said, Funkle. Aww.